Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? We are gonna be chatting about all of the worst products from my favorite makeup brands. These are brands that I am always raving about. I'm always sharing their newest releases and just in general, their products really seem to work for me. So I wanna take a moment and share with you the products that don't work for me, the products that I don't love from the brand. Some of this is personal preference where it's just a product that I don't think is like perfect for me and how I do my makeup. And then some of it I do feel like maybe the quality is not the absolute best that I've seen from the brand. I did this video before a few years back, so if you wanna watch the first one that I did, I will have it linked in the cards for you here. I believe it was focused on all of my favorite indie brands and I tried not to talk about products in this video that I talked about in that video, even though it was quite a while ago, but highly recommend checking that out if you wanna hear more, but for now, let's jump on in. Let's start off with Blend Bunny. They are definitely one of my favorite indie brands. I feel like I am always vibing with what they're doing and 99% of the time, I am loving and raving about their products. But I feel like for me, the Forget Me Not palette is just not my absolute favorite. So. I appreciate it, I still will reach for it, but if you're asking me like, there's so many palettes from Blend Bunny, which one should I get? I would pretty much recommend everything else before this one. So this is a palette that is supposed to be a mixture of a face and an eyeshadow palette. I've also used it for my brows before and it's supposed to be like really multifunctional and it is, but at the same time, I do feel like it's missing some shades for example, you have like a really stark white, you have a brightening pink, but I feel like it really could have done with like a brightening yellow, maybe a brightening peach, because these are both kind of cool toned, and I have been able to kind of mix some of these contour shades, but I didn't feel like I had like a perfect bronzer shade out of here. The highlights are pretty, but I did feel like these two shades right here were very similar for like only having four highlight shades. I felt like those ones were really, really close. Even though Blend Bunny said that this is their normal formula, it's the same as what they always have. I didn't love these on the eyes as much. I just felt like they were more soft and I just feel like I didn't have like the richness that I normally get from Blend Bunny eyeshadows. In my head, it's like a nice idea, like everything in one, but it's a really big palette. Even like if you were gonna bring this for travel, to me, it is too big for that. And if I'm using it at home, I would just reach into the products I already have that are perfect for me versus like trying to get everything out of one palette. So yeah, all in all, like it's not that it's bad quality, it's just not my favorite from Bun Bunny. And then I also thought I would mention their Sugar High Lip Oil. This is in the shade Sugar Spun and it is a blue lip oil. And there's nothing wrong with this. I do like their lip oil formula, especially their nude lip oils are really, really beautiful. But I can confidently say that I never reached for this. I wanted to love it. I wanted it to be cool, but I'm just not a blue lip oil kind of girl. This is definitely personal preference. Even though I have more opinions on the Forget Me Not palette, I still reach for this way more than this. Next, let's talk about Adept Cosmetics because they are another one of my top tier favorite indie brands. I love their eyeshadow palettes with a passion, but it was actually really easy to choose. That was my dog, sorry. It was really easy to choose my least favorite. I just don't feel like this palette is worth it. It's not that it's bad. It is beautiful, but I just don't think it's worth the price. So that is going to be their Seahorse palette. And this is stunning. It's like a full palette of pastel multi-chromes. Like, I love the way it looks. I really do love it on the eyes. But again, if I'm recommending a palette from Adept, this is not one that pops into my head. It was very expensive. I think it was like $135. We do have two shades right here, which are very, very similar. Like just way too similar in my opinion for a palette that is a hundred plus dollars. And Adept has so many amazing palettes that are under a hundred dollars. I'm just comparing this in my head to Sumerian Sunset because I believe that one is around $80, which don't get me wrong, is still an expensive palette, but it is jam packed with multi-chromes. It has enough mattes to be its own complete color story. So yeah, this is my least favorite palette from Adept. It's the one I'm not likely to recommend to you unless you have a budget for it, you love pastel multi-chromes, and you want all of them in one palette. Like, it's not a bad palette. Like, I just wanna emphasize that like, there's nothing wrong with it quality-wise other than those two shades that are a little bit too similar, but it's just expensive. Next, let's talk about Natasha Denona. I have so many palettes from her. It feels like an entire, where is it? There's Blend Bunny, Adept, 
Sydney Grace, which I could not think of a worse product from Sydney Grace, just so you guys know. And then here's all of my Natasha Denona. So obviously, I love her. I purchased them all myself. I do have two worst things that really stand out to me, and one is the mini trio chrome palette. Actually, where'd I put her? I don't know where the mini trio chrome palette is. I was just disappointed by that because like the trio chrome multi chrome shade is disappointing, but realistically, logically, the worst release from Natasha Denona, and I stand by this, is the pastel palette. I love the packaging, I love the color story, but this was just not done that well. I just feel like the quality is lacking here. So many of the shades are just hard to the touch and they're just not very pigmented. And the thing is, is that this palette genuinely makes me sad because it was an accessible pastel palette that you could purchase in Sephora and Ulta. I feel like this potentially could have turned off pastels for so many people. Like if you were like, oh, I don't know if I can use pastels or if they'll show up on me and then you use this palette and then you were like, uh, no, I don't like pastels. It's like, no, I promise you there's so many better pastels out there. This is just the one that like really, really stinks. I would recommend the, this is really convenient right now. I would recommend you the Sickly Sweet palette from Blend Bunny any day. These pastels were done a thousand times better. I actually have a full video doing a comparison between these two that I can link for you in the cards here, but yeah, this pastel palette was such a letdown and I love pastels. Next, let's talk about e.l.f. Cosmetics and I don't know if you guys would be surprised to see e.l.f. like listed as a favorite brand, but I've really been into what they're doing and I have bought like all of their recent launches. I bought their lip oils, I bought their liquid blushes, I bought their like little pout clout lip pens, which those are really, really beautiful. I purchased their newest foundation. I've been into what they're doing and I've overall been really enjoying everything, but I just have to say, I do not understand the hype for the Halo Glow liquid filter. Apparently this is like their number one product and I don't love it, so. I have the shade Zero Fair and they did a shade extension twice for the fair shades and this is still pretty bronzy. Like it's, I'll show you what it looks like on me. Like I still feel like they could have gone lighter for having two shade extensions. This is pretty much just blending into my skin tone. I wish that they had one shade, like just a touch lighter. I'd really, really enjoy that. For me, if I'm using this product as a liquid highlight, it does the job. If I'm just kind of patting it on the tops of my cheekbones, like a little dot on my nose, like just those like very pinpointed spaces, it does what it needs to do. But I really like using a product like this for multiple functions. Sometimes I like wearing it on its own. Sometimes I like mixing it into foundation. And I have realized Every time I mix this in my foundation, I hate the way my foundation looks. Like it just ends up making everything look heavy and I just feel like the glow just does not look natural. Like if you get real up close to my skin, I'm not wearing it right now, but if I was and you got really up close, I just feel like it looks really textured and it just does not do my skin any favors. Whereas like I know it's so much more expensive, but the Auric Glow Lust, I feel like everything that I mix this in with, it looks beautiful. I wear it by itself. I wear it with moisturizer. I wear it with a skin tint. I wear it with foundation. I wear it as a highlight. I wear it as a bronzer. Perfect in every situation. And this, I just don't love. I just don't think it has that quality to it. And again, the shade, I just wish it was a little lighter because I am using it not as a mixing shade. Like as a mixing shade, that is fine. But if I'm wanting to highlight my cheekbones, I wish I had something just a smidge lighter. So yeah, this has overall not been it for me. So a brand that I have fallen in love with more recently is Bella Beauté Bar. They have really beautiful palettes. I love their Basic Witch palette. I love their Ultraviolet palette. They just seem to have good quality, fun color stories, and super shifty, multi-chrome, just fun shimmers. And because of that, I did purchase their Angles of Illumination palette that they came out with for Christmas because I was like, I'm obsessed with their shimmers. Their shimmers are so good. And I feel like this palette is not a representation of how amazing Bella Beauté Bar is because there are multiple shades in here that are very, very similar. The shade Moonlight, Gleam, and I think it was Starlight. Those three all ended up looking so similar to one another. And I guess there was a manufacturing error. So they were selling this for like slightly cheaper because of these two shades being pretty much the exact same. And I appreciate that there was a small discount, but overall I feel like this was a pretty expensive palette. It was like, I think like 
$65 and I don't feel like the shimmers in here are as special as their other palettes. You also don't get to experience their creativity with a really beautiful color story because it is all shimmers and it's like very blue and purple heavy and this is more of like a palette that you're going to be pulling in other palettes with, pulling in some matte single shadows. Unless you enjoy wearing all shimmers, then you know, live your best life. But if you like a mixture of shimmers and mattes, then you're definitely gonna need to pull into other things. So again, this is something where I'm like, the quality is not bad, but it's definitely not their best. And if I had looked at all of their palettes, I was ranking all of them because I haven't tried anything else from the brand, only their eyeshadow palettes. This would definitely be the worst one in my eyes. Okay, next let's talk Rare Beauty, which again is another brand that I've really been loving. I love their cream blushes, their cream bronzers, their skin tint. I've been into like everything they're doing. I don't know that I necessarily buy every release, but I feel like I always have my eye on what they're doing. And I just have to say, I do not like this eye brightener in the shade Light. I have been giving this another go. I talked about it in my declutter of my concealers and correctors. And I saw Nikki LaRose saying that she really enjoys using this for like, I'm not wearing any makeup. I just want a little something under my eyes. And I was like, you know what? I haven't used the eye brightener like that. I've only used it when I was like doing a full glam look. Maybe I'm missing out on that. Maybe that's where this product will shine, but no. I still don't love it. I feel like even wearing no makeup and putting this on, I just feel like I'm doing nothing. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's like the lightest shade, but it's not actually like super brightening on my skin. Like it kind of just blends into my skin, but it doesn't actually have any coverage to it. So I feel like I'm putting it underneath my eyes, I'm blending it out and then like I'm seeing nothing. Like I feel like when I use this, I'm genuinely just wasting my time. I've tried using it so many different ways. I wanted to love this. I wanted to make it work, but it's just, it's not for me. I don't want to forget to mention this because I don't have it on hand. This is something that I have decluttered. The BK Beauty True Neutrals palette. I just, I'll throw out a picture on screen. I love BK Beauty. I love their brushes. They make really beautiful lipsticks. I'm even loving their makeup bags, like their brush holders. I actually have one like stuffed with brushes right now, but I used this last time I went on a trip and it's literally so perfect because you can have all your brushes to where you can see them and then you can pull it up and you know close it and the brushes are already exactly where you need them when you have them again. Like. It's just, it's super convenient for doing your makeup on the go. But for me, this eyeshadow palette was just too soft, too subtle. Everything was very lightly pigmented. There were some matte shades and then there were some very satiny, subtle shades. And I just feel like this palette is made for someone who doesn't wear that much makeup or who wears very, very neutral makeup like just the most soft, subtle eye looks. Like I feel like if you love shimmer, if you love depth, if you love like not having to build up your shadows, like th this was not the one for me. Like I just, I'm not saying it's a bad palette because I do truly feel like it is personal preference, but I feel like if you watch my channel and you like a lot of the things that I like, and you have a similar preference with eyeshadow as I do, then you probably won't enjoy this. Okay, next let's talk about the Odin's Eye Gel Liners, and I actually don't know if they still sell these. They came in this really cute packaging, and they came up with like a rainbow of colors of gel liners. I just pulled out one random shade just to show you. Oh, and it broke. I swatched the part that broke off and you can see it, but I feel like it gets hard on the tip and when I'm trying to apply them to my waterline, I have to really build them up and I don't like that. I feel like it's such a sensitive, delicate area that anywhere else on my makeup, I'm like, if I have to build this up a little bit, that's fine. But I don't wanna have to go back and forth with a product in my waterline over and over again in order to be able to see the shade. I'm very adamant about that when it comes to liners. And with these, like, you can see the pigment, but I'll show you like trying to apply it. Like, do you see how much I had to go back and forth just to get that little line? You can see it, but I feel like, for example, the ColourPop liners, super affordable, and I can just do like one swipe, maybe two at the most, and have full impact, full coverage. So I like match that on the other side where it's gonna look weird, right? Do you see that though? Like, applying this on a watery eye line, not the move. Yeah, I stand by my thoughts. They look fine swatched out, but like in use, 
they're just not that good so that's why i feel like you guys never see me use these or talk about them i was really excited when they came out with them but i just have liners from so many other brands that do a better job lastly i want to talk about danessa myricks i love her brand and even though i don't purchase everything i really appreciate the artistry i appreciate the innovativeness like I just think she comes out with some of the coolest products. Like I'm always excited to see what they're coming out with. And I have bought some eyeshadow. I bought some different face products. I really enjoyed some of it, but my least favorite product is their Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I feel like when you hear serum foundation, you think that this is gonna be like a really light, like liquidy type foundation. It's gonna be beautiful and glowy. And that is not what you get from this. This is such a thick foundation. You can get it to work by mixing it in with other things and not using it like so full coverage. But for me, I don't like a thick foundation. I like my skin to look like skin, but just a little bit better. Sometimes I like something a little bit more full coverage, but this like this tends to look cakey on the skin and it's just a foundation that I never reach for. I did give it a second chance in a video and I was able to get it to where I was like, oh, like it's a little bit better, but realistically speaking, I don't like it. And in comparison, the Yummy Skin Skin Tint, I'll show you. This is my favorite product from the brand. It's so hard to explain how good this makes your skin look, but it is so, so beautiful. So I feel like this really does come down to personal preference because if you're someone who likes more full coverage, you wanna just pack it on, then maybe you'll love this and you'll hate this. But for me, this is my best and this is my worst. All right, y'all, so those are all of the products I wanted to talk about today. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I would love to hear what the worst product is that you've tried from your favorite brand. Feel free to have a conversation with me down below and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.